Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys 20 tips and tricks for Slayer. So throughout my Road to 120 Slayer series, I did pick up a lot of tips and tricks while I was training Slayer. So I wanted to show you guys 20 of them um, and hopefully these will help you guys out on your way to training Slayer, whether it be 99 Slayer, 120 Slayer, or even 200 mil Slayer XP. So jumping into our first tip, this is more of a basic tip. It's first off, complete the Smoking Kills quest. So this quest is an essential quest to start Slayer. Basically what it does, it allows you the ability to craft the Slayer helmet. You'll also get double the Slayer points, at least the normal amount of Slayer points that you should be getting after you complete this quest. So it is really important to complete this quest um, before training Slayer any further beyond that level 35 Slayer requirement to start it. This tip does transition well into our second one, which is always use your Slayer Helmet. The Slayer Helmet provides a damage boost to all Slayer creatures when you are on task, when it's worn. Um, when you do get the full Slayer Helmet, this damage boost is up to 12.5%, which is quite a bit for uh, Slayer tasks. Now, as for me, I have my Slayer Helmet on the Slayer Helmet stand in the Anachronia base camp. You can get this by getting a Tier 3 Slayer Lodge. Um, and that way you don't even need to wear the Slayer Helmet and you still retain the bonuses across RuneScape whenever you are on task. Tip number three is always complete Reaper Tasks. Reaper Tasks are not only an exceptional way to make some money, you also get a little bit of Slayer XP as well. Um, but just by completing these Reaper Tasks, you obviously have that chance at getting a unique boss drop. But also the Reaper Points, they are worth a lot right now. They are essentially worth 240k per point if you're going to be buying a Hydrix with this and you can get anywhere from 20 to 30 points per task. Now, completing Reaper tasks, it doesn't mean you have to do some of the difficult bosses like uh, Araxi, Telos, those higher level bosses. You can also do some lower level ones like Chaos Elemental, you got the Giant Mole, KBD, all the God Wars Dungeon 1 creatures as well. Um, completing Reaper tasks at a low level also is an exceptional way to train your Slayer level for those low levels, especially if you do have a friend that is willing to help you out. For example, you do get 40,000 Slayer XP when completing a Reaper task, no matter your level. So if you do do one of these tasks when you are about level 10 Slayer or whatnot, you'll be gaining 10 or 20 levels just by completing this Reaper task. Moving on to tip number four is double vital spark drops. So essentially what this is, is you will want to complete fill your Slayer chest in the Softenum Slayer dungeon and make sure that there aren't any Vital Sparks in there. That way whenever you get the Vital Spark drop it will have to drop on the floor. Since it does drop on the floor you do have a chance at getting double the Vital Sparks. Um, vital Sparks are where you make most of your money off of these Corrupted Creature tasks. Um, if you are not getting many keys to the crossing that is. So it is an exceptional way to boost your GP per hour whenever you have a Corrupted Creature task or a Soul Devourer task. Tip number five is make sure you are using your Yushabdis. So essentially what these are, they will allow you to capture the souls of the Slayer creatures you are slaying. This is only unlocked at level 99 Slayer however, um, but you can put these Slayer creatures in your personal Slayer dungeon and a lot of the creatures are a lot better to kill there. One such creature is the uh, Crystal Shapeshifters. Now along with placing the creatures capture souls in the player on slayer dungeon you can also place them in the chest of souls now when you do place them in the chest of souls it basically does complete the slayer codex um, and every 20 souls that you do add to this codex will add a one percent boost to slayer experience gained while you are wearing your slayer helmet you can gain up to five percent boost for adding 100 souls so that is just basically some passive xp that you will be gaining if you do do this Tip number six is make sure you are completing your Slayer contracts, more specifically if you are on task. Um, as you can see, you can go to the Slayer Tower and you can just pick up a Slayer contract if you're killing any of these creatures. It will give you 20% of the regular Slayer XP that you would have gained on task. And these regular contracts can be picked up when you don't even have a Slayer task. Now, you can also get a special Slayer contract when you are on task and it will give you a 20% extra XP boost to completing the Slayer task. You also get a little bit of a reward from Combat XP to coins. 
Another Slayer tip that I have for you guys is use the better Slayer Master, especially when you are completing the 10th or 50th task. That is because you will get a Slayer point bonus when you do complete 10 tasks in a row or 50 tasks or whatever. Um, so for example, if you are doing lower Slayer tasks at, uh, for example, Vanica, um, then you can complete nine of these, but when you get that 10th task, move up to a better Slayer Master, that way you will get more Slayer points for that one task. The next tip that I have for you guys is make sure you do utilize your prefer and block list. Now you will only want to prefer and block creatures after you have your Slayer helmet all upgraded. Um, so you will want to spend your Slayer points on that first, but you can then work on the prefer and block list. Make sure you prefer all the best Slayer tasks and then block the really bad ones. I do have a guide, um, a full tier list on all the Slayer creatures that Lanica does assign. So you guys can check that out. I will link that in the description and it'll give you guys an idea as to what tasks are good and what tasks are bad. Tip number nine is make sure that you do not toggle on bad tasks. So these bad tasks, for example, would be a Quanties. Also, Nihils don't really give too much Slayer XP, but they do give a lot of coins, so you can decipher which one you would rather um, toggle on for that. Um, but again, check out my tier list that I will link in the description down below. It will give you guys a better idea as to what creatures are really great and what you might want to toggle on for a good task. Tip number 10 is make sure that you are always completing your daily Slayer challenge. These Slayer challenges, they do give a lot of XP. All you need to do is kill 35 Slayer creatures and you basically get about 67,000 Slayer XP. That is if you are at level 99 Slayer. You can also extend this task to double the reward, gaining around 130,000 Slayer XP, basically for just killing 70 Slayer creatures. It is a great idea to do this every day if you're training Slayer passively, um, and you will gain a lot of Slayer XP over a short amount of time doing this each and every day. Tip number 11 also goes pretty well with our daily challenge tip. This tip is make sure to use your Slayer Masks. So you can get Slayer Masks for various different Slayer creatures. Um, one of the best ones is being the Slayer Mask for the Abyssal Demons. You can actually use these masks on a Slayer Master if you don't have a task already, and they will automatically assign you that task. It can only be completed once per day, um, but if you do this, um, it will allow you to do a pretty easy task. For example, Abyssal Demons, which is a really fast task, you'll be able to complete your daily challenge pretty quickly and gain some nice XP every day that way. Moving on to tip number 12 is make sure that you have scavenging 4 on some equipment when you're doing some slayer tasks. So scavenging 4, essentially what it is, it will allow you to pick up some random invention components while you are killing creatures. Slayer is an excellent time to use scavenging since you are killing a lot of creatures um, in high frequencies, so you will get a lot of, a lot of these scavenging procs um, pretty often. Especially if you do have scavenging 4, it is about 1 in every six kills where you should get a proc and at least get some materials. You can also get some rare components as well, such as noxious components, so that is where you are going to be saving a ton of money if you do have the scavenging perk. Also, I do have a full guide on the scavenging perk that I will link in the description as well if you guys want a little bit more information on it. Moving on to tip number 13, it is make sure you are completing some boss slayer tasks as well. So there are a lot of slayer tasks where you can kill some bosses instead. Um, some of these tasks include Krill. Krill is a greater demon task, so you can do that. And it is some pretty decent slayer XP as well. You also got the Avianchi's task where you can kill Krayara. Ascension members, you can kill legions. You got a ton of black dragon tasks where you can kill the king black dragon, queen black dragon. Um, and then there's also a few others, um, such as Calphites, you can kill the Calphite queen, Calphite king. So there are a lot of boss slayer tasks which you can do. And these make it a lot more fun. It is a little bit of a change of a pace to Slayer, which is really nice. And you got a chance at getting some of those unique drops as well. Moving on to tip number 14. This is make sure you are extending your good tasks. So for example, I would only do this if you are a pretty high Slayer level and you have a lot of extra Slayer points. When I was on my road to 120 Slayer, I did this a lot, especially when I got a 
dragon cluster task. Um, the dragon cluster task you can complete elite dungeons too, which is a pretty much a boss slayer task, and it is my favorite task to do in the game. So whenever I got this, I extended it so I got to do as much elite dungeons too while completing slayer as well. Um, so this is a really great tip for you guys. Make sure that you do it with your favorite tasks only. That way you also won't get a bit burnt out with Slayer either. Tip number 15 is make sure you are using Slayer VIP tickets. So Slayer VIP tickets give you the choice between two different Slayer tasks each time you are obtaining them. They're extremely useful at high levels. That way you will be able to pick the better task. Um, and you can obtain them pretty easily. So I do have a full guide talking about different ways to obtain the Slayer VIP tickets. But the best way, in my opinion, is the Cabbage Face Punch minigame. Um, and I do talk about that minigame completely and how to do it in one of my guides. And I will link that guide in the description down below. But just make sure you do have some Slayer VIP tickets and you are using them. Because it does make just getting the better Slayer tasks a lot easier. Tip number 16 is make sure you are using your cannon and old act coil whenever possible. Um, there are a few tasks specifically which the cannon or old act coil is extremely useful at. Um, as you can see here, the venomous dinosaurs, they are an exceptional task to use the old act coil with. Same with the nightmares. Nightmares are a really good creature to use the old act coil with, especially because you don't want to use aggression potions, so it does make it a little bit more AFK. Um, and also you deal a little bit more damage with that old act coil. Um, so make sure you are using these um, cannon or the old act coil whenever you can. And there are a few tasks in particular where you really should do this, um, such as these two. Moving on to tip number 17, it is make sure you have the Bone Crusher, Charming Imp, and also the Attuned Ectoplasmeter as well. So the Bone Crusher and the Attuned Ectoplasmeter, these are basically uh, just extra items that will allow you to gain some passive prayer XP while you are killing these creatures. The Bone Crusher will automatically crush bones for prayer XP, while the Attuned Ectoplasmeter will um, automatically scatter the ashes for prayer XP. And it is extremely great to use at Krill, especially, um, also because you can use that with the Demon Horn Necklace as well and basically have unlimited prayer. Now, the Charming Imp this is also another extremely useful item when you do have Slayer um, charms. They are pretty difficult to get, so uh, just having the Charming Imp picking up all the charms automatically for you while you are completing your Slayer task, it is really helpful for training summoning in the future. Tip number 18 is the Ferocious Ring Damage Buff. So the Ferocious Ring is a really useful ring to use in Curadel's Dungeon. Um, so if you do have a task, um, you can actually use Curadel's Dungeon for um, all the creatures inside it. If you do have a Ferocious Ring, make sure you are wearing it in this dungeon. It will provide a 4% damage increase to every hit when fighting monsters in this dungeon. It also acts as a Ring of Life in the dungeon. You can also teleport to Curadel. Um, it has 5 charges to do that as well. Um, so this is a really great ring to have, um, especially if you are doing your tasks in this dungeon. The ring is obtained as a rare drop while killing these creatures in the dungeon, so just make sure if you do have one in the bank that you are using it for future tasks. Tip number 19 is make sure you are doing your Slayer DNDs. So there isn't really too many different ways to obtain Slayer XP aside from doing your Slayer tasks, but there are a few one such is the God Statues. You can do this uh, every month. It is a monthly mini game, and there's five of them. Uh, if you do have 99 Slayer, you will be gaining about 20,000 Slayer XP per God Statue while you are doing this. So essentially, that's 100k XP every month, just free for uh, Slayer. Um, a few other mini games that you can do include the uh, Wilderness Warder Bands. You can get some passive Slayer XP from that as well, and you can do that uh, twice every day actually. So um, Basically, just make sure that you are taking advantage of these D&Ds. Tip number 20 is make sure that you are using some useful gear. So, specifically, I want to talk about the Salve Amulet and the Dragon Slayer Gloves. Now, the Salve Amulet, it is a reward from the Haunted Mine quest, and it does boost the damage and accuracy for all combat styles when you are fighting undead monsters, such as Aberrant Spectres, Banshees, Shades, also Elite Dungeons 3. Um, so this is a really useful item to use when completing those Slayer tasks. 
Um, also, you can get the Dragon Slayer gloves, and they can be purchased for 200 Fist of Gothix tokens. So uh, you might have to do that mid game to get this, but it does give 15% more Slayer XP and a 10% attack bonus when you are slaying dragons on an assignment. So these two items might be pretty helpful depending on the assignment that you do have. Um, so just make sure that uh, if you do want to try and get those, you can, especially the Salve Amulet. I would say that one is really helpful. And so anyway guys, that is it for today's video. Those are all my 20 tips and tricks for Slayer. I really hope you guys did enjoy this video and you found some of these tips helpful. Also, if you guys can think of any tips and tricks that I didn't mention in this video, let me know in the comments down below and I will try to pin the best ones for everyone to see. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you did enjoy the video and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.